Okay, then um, good day, everyone. Um, thanks for joining our um, talk today. Um, today we have a very special story. It's a story of resurrection, and the focus of the story will be on the Saiga. Uh, my name is Ola, and I'm a part of Saiga Conservation Alliance. Um, as, as the name suggests, um, Saiga is the antelope that you can see uh, on the screen right now, and it's a very special antelope um, that is critically endangered. Um, and um, as the talk unveils, you will understand why. Um, but to start, let's look um, at the last year, uh, well, this year, that was very different for all of us. Um, and I guess everyone would uh, think of COVID-19, which impacted a lot of lives. And so remembering that, um, I can think um, that we can clearly see the connection between people and the wildlife, because it wasn't just um, the people that um, had to go through a lot of changes, but it also was uh, affecting a lot of wildlife. Um, that also had to go through a lot of um, changes. And especially if we think about conservation efforts, um, we had to be very creative in the ways how we tackle the new challenges. So let me just ask you to think about the animals and the people uh, in the context of uh, being something that is very well interconnected. So it's never just a story about the animal when we try to save some kind of species. It's also ultimately the story of individuals and groups of people uh, and our well-being. So how has been last year for us? Well, we can clearly imagine how the life has been for individuals and the groups, uh, perhaps um, businesses, um, some corporations. Well, for us, conservationists, it also has been very different, but it's not a sad story. So for us, it, it is a story of being uh, pushed to think creatively, to think outside of the box. And uh, for example, with our activities, um, we had to switch a lot of things online, like the other uh, people, like many of us has to do. So uh, what happened is we have this uh, well-established system of uh, environmental education that is prevalent in a few countries like Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Russia, and Mongolia. And so basically uh, we tried to incorporate um, step wildlife clubs, which is the basis for this environmental education program that we have. Uh, and transfer it to online uh, medium. And so basically, some very great things happened. Uh, we created different online networks and different groups, and um, we had more participation in the way because not only uh, the children and uh, some of the adults were able to join the activities and still celebrate the Saiga Day, for example, which is the biggest event that we have during the year. Uh, but entire families were able to join and participate all together. So, and here you can see some examples of um, different challenges we had. Um, so the kids, like the families now, um, actually created different posters and the Saiga masks and showed their support in many, many different ways. Um, so here are some more examples, like the, there was a lot of artwork involved, um, quite a lot of handicrafts and um, even some digital works, like uh, we joined the challenge of WWF, where um, the kids in Russia uh, were asked to create different artworks, uh, inserting the Saiga image in some of their famous paintings. So here you can try to spot the Saiga and participate in the activity. Um, now, before we move on, uh, let me introduce um, our next speaker. Um, so uh, there are two of us leading this presentation today, um, and we have Yelena and she'll tell you more about the other aspects of uh, our work. Hi, everybody. I am very happy to see you uh, virtually uh, through uh, my uh, computer screen and very hope to see all of you next year uh, in, in real life and share about Saiga as well. Uh, I'm Elena. I'm Ola's uh, mom, and I work uh, for a very long time for SA, uh, like program director of, uh, of Uzbekistan. Today, I would like to uh, tell you about how we make uh, research in Saiga Range and also how the support of poaching, uh, anti poaching work. Uh, unfortunately, uh, COVID time uh, negatively reflected for our plans uh, for conducting uh, research activity in Uzbekistan and other countries, and all planet work uh, was uh, had been uh, cancelled or postponed for next year. For instance, uh, we plan for this year 
uh, conduct a socio-economical uh, survey in Resurrection Island in Uzbekistan, but have uh, postponed it uh, for the 2021. And our colleagues in Kazakhstan, uh, in Kazakhstan who annually uh, conduct Saiga Kalvinic research and annual uh, Saiga aerial survey, also uh, have cancelled their plans and postponed them for the next year. But uh, very good news uh, is that uh, art polishing work still continues. And I would like to uh, talk you more about how rangers uh, of two protected area, uh, which supported by SSA, uh, SA for the very long time, continue their um, hard work to stop and prevent a criminal in cyber range. Uh, from the very beginning, uh, SA support work of uh, Saigachari of Uzbekistan, and I will tell you about this a bit later. And also we support uh, work of uh, Rangers Group in Signal Reserve, Russia. And you can see uh, in this slide uh, some people who work in Astrakhan region of Russian Federation uh, for the uh, Saiga conservation and uh, for protection Saiga and Saiga ecosystem against the uh, criminal person who live in uh, this area. Uh, very often people ask us uh, what is happen in uh, uh, during the time of uh, lockdown in the Saiga ecosystem if uh, Saiga poaching was increased or not. Uh, some people understand that uh, during this uh, difficult time, many people are losing their job and this uh, could motivate people for illegal activities, including uh, killing saigas for buying uh, their horn and meat. And we uh, ask this question uh, to arrangers in Russian and uh, get uh, answers that um, poaching was not increased. And uh, this is really good news and we try to understand uh, what helps them uh, to continue their work. Uh, all of you are very good note how difficult uh, rangers work. These people work in a very hard uh, climate conditions. They work in night time. Uh, they work during the um, winter uh, uh, when it could be very cold. Uh, for instance, in Russian step, uh, temperature could uh, low down to uh, minus 30 degrees. This is about um, 100 degrees uh, by Fahrenheit. And uh, during the summertime, temperature could, uh, could rise to uh, plus 40 degree, uh, plus 50 degree. It's very difficult to uh, continue this job in such condition. Uh, each day, rangers risk by their health and even their life. And maybe some of you remember uh, last year we talked about uh, two rangers uh, from Kazakhstan who was killed uh, by uh, Saiga hunters. This could be happen uh, each day. And of course, each of us very clear understands this uh, ranger, uh, rangers in, uh, who work in protected areas and other rangers group, group require very good uh, fatigue and very good support to keep uh, their life protected and uh, making their job very well. And uh, now I would like uh, to share with you an uh, interesting video that we get uh, from Signal Reserve to give you a more deep impression uh, about uh, life and work of rangers from uh, Signal Reserve. Uh, these guys are involved not only in uh, anti pouching service, but also uh, they work for prevention, uh, prevention of fire. That could be happen very often in Russian state, especially in um, autumn time uh, when uh, grass became very dry. And they uh, try to uh, clean areas uh, from the dry grass and they try to dig uh, dip, uh, special anti uh, fair lines to predict uh, firing in these areas and keep step safely. And also this ranger, uh, rangers um, keep and worry about watering place for the saiga and another wildlife. And on this video you can see very beautiful, uh, beautiful uh, watering place artisan springs that located in Signal Reserve, 
uh, which attracts so many um, animals, saigas, and another wild animal included uh, wolf, fox, uh, steppe uh, cats, uh, or many raptors and beautiful crates that inhabited in, in, um, in a steppe. And also, uh, this watering played a very attractive spot for the photographer and uh, and researcher who uh, came here and spent uh, time uh, close this uh, small lake making a beautiful shooting beautiful photos and uh, their research and observation about behavior uh, behavior of sagas and another uh, animals uh, a continued story about uh, how rangers uh, work during the lockdown time. I would like to show you this picture that we again get from a uh, Sukhno Reserve of Russia. You can see uh, Saigas in very close distance from the uh, human house. That uh, means the Saiga feel uh, very protective and very trustful to the people. If they came during the lockdown very close to a ranger's um, field base uh, because uh, the uh, protection is, uh, was made very good. Why it uh, was possible uh, to do uh, during this uh, difficult time? Actually, uh, to be honest, in, uh, after lockdown, um, Russian government uh, dec uh, decreased uh, funding for the uh, rangers patrol. It was a big problem for the rangers from Sipno Reserve and we all are very worried how they could continue this uh, day by the day work to protect Saiga in uh, other wildlife as Sipno Reserve without uh, enough funding uh, from side of the government. And we uh, sent request to WC and uh, help uh, rangers from Sipno Reserve uh, support uh, their um, cost for the uh, petrol, for the fixing uh, their car, for the uh, buying some necessary equipment and uh, uniform. And uh, we get money through WCN uh, COVID-19 Emergent Relief Fund. And uh, thanks to this funding, uh, ranges from Sipnoi Reserve could not only um, make their uh, normal job and keep a uh, normal uh, patrolling in Sipno Reserve. They even uh, increase number of patrolling. They give very good result that you observed for the previous photo and for this photo as well. Saigas um, save it. Uh, Saiga population uh, looks very healthy and very trustful for the people. They uh, don't afraid uh, people and uh, come very close to the, uh, to the human building, how you can see. Uh, and uh, uh, rangers from Sipno Reserve was so kind uh, to share uh, a short, um, a short video uh, made by a uh, leader of a ranger group, uh, Vladimir Kalmakov, uh, where he tried to uh, gratitude uh, WCNACA for support and. Um, and uh, tell more about how uh, this uh, help is this su uh, support important uh, for uh, Sipno Reserve and for protection side at all. Дорогие коллеги, позвольте от имени сотрудника заказника Степной искренне поблагодарить вас за поддержку, оказанную нам для сохранения популяции сайга в северо-западном прекрасном. В это очень нелегкое время. Оказанная вами помощь незначительной степени способствовала увеличению рейдов по охране Сайгака, а также проведению ряда биотехнических мероприятий и ремонта автопарка заказника. Если у вас или у ваших друзей появится желание посетить заказник, мы будем рады вас увидеть здесь на территории заказника и показать вам то, что совместными усилиями мы сохранили показать сайгака, показать волков, лис, зайцев э, и ряда птиц, которые живут на территории заказника. Now rangers of Saigacha Reserve, uh, like rangers from uh, Sipno Reserve, involved not only in uh, poaching activities.
uh, also uh, they involved in monitoring for wildlife and uh, cyber monitoring they have uh, such good results from the uh, camera trap and the uh, which they share it with us and i happy to show you uh, several evidence uh cygas that uh, came through the country border uh, from kazakhstan to uzbekistan a state uh, for the uh, all winter time in the area of signal reserve of this uh, picture you can see young male on the ground of small stock of saiga uh, that uh, spent uh, they wintered in saigacha reserve he is a maternal uh, male this is female with a uh, newborn that was um, was born in uh, Saigacha Reserve. I can say you uh, that it was happened uh, first time for a very uh, long time period. Very uh, long time we did not observe it uh, calving in uh, uh, in Saigacha Reserve. And now it's really good news and uh, that give us hopeness uh, for the um, restoration side for the resurrection side population the, uh, in Uzbekistan, they still uh, have a very uh, low number in comparison with different population, but have all chance for the recovering in nearest future. Uh, inside Dutch Reserve also inhabited uh, different interesting animals. Uh, for instance, in this slide, you can see uh, some mm, mammals. And I would like to make stress for the uh, uh, for the caracal fox. It's very dangerous species in Uzbekistan that included like a saiga in red data book. And we have uh, very few records uh, for these animals in uh, in Uzbekistan. If such records was made in in Saigacha Reserve. This is uh, very good news as well. Um, now I would like to give a chance Ole continue our presentation and share you uh, about our new program uh, that focuses on a uh, different part of uh, area in uh, side area in Uzbekistan uh, that located in Resurrection Island in the former island of Aralsi. Now we're at the la last part of our talk when we actually talk about the Resurrection Island. And you might be wondering why am I talking about the island, even though you can clearly see a desert uh, right here on the screen. Uh, but the truth is, that is a, an island, or it used to be an island uh, back in the days when the entire area uh, used to be a large sea. So here you can see how the sea changed over the time. And it's not a very long time. So basically, that used to be um, the fourth largest sea in the world. Um, and it's called uh, ROC. And so we can try to place it on the map uh, and think of Russia and the southern states or like southern countries next to the Caspian Sea. That's exactly the place where the ROC is located. So um, what happened is um, the water from the ROC was overly used for agriculture locally in Uzbekistan and um, as a result you can see the entire place turned into a desert. So uh, that's one of those stories that is very shocking and that shows um, another like perspective on of how quick uh, this destruction of environment can happen uh, if it's not regulated. So here another interesting aspect to the whole RLC story is that uh, particularly the Resurrection Island has a very um, intricate history. So basically uh, the island used to be known um, for uh, being a place uh, that would host a uh, USSR military base. And here you can see a short clip about this base uh, and what it looks like. And so basically um, the base itself uh, created the perfect protection for the local species because people were not allowed to get in there since um, the, the, the status of the territory was really um, closed uh, when it came to um, people from outside visiting. So uh, because of that, it was wonderful for the wildlife uh, and it created this kind of natural, almost natural protection. And you can see the diversity of different species that are still can be found in Resurrection Island. Um, the problem is, however, that um, the island also is a very attractive place uh, for different companies and different businesses. So now that there is no uh, military base anymore, the access to the island remains open. 
uh, and there are different parties that are interested in exploiting nature resources. So, however, you may also ask how the story relates to the Saiga. Uh, and here you can see the footprints of the Saiga. Uh, and that, um, interestingly enough, tells us that that area also uh, was a habitat of the Saiga. Uh, but there was a very special group of the Saiga isolated exclusively on that island. And so before, historically, there were quite some evidences uh, that quite a large group of saigas were found there. And then the group of the saiga sought to be extinct uh, because of the massive decline in the saiga populations worldwide. Um, and so we saw that the, the same thing happened to the saigas in Resurrection Island uh, on the side of Uzbekistan. Um, according to our latest data and, and our latest responses we got from local communities, um, we know that now there are still saigas. Uh, lately this year, uh, we were able to um, conduct some interviews and we figured out that there are at least 30 individuals, which is very great. So this uh, population remains stable on the island and it doesn't move around that much, uh, even though normally saigas would migrate uh, because of uh, different seasons, so they would migrate to find better pastures uh, between spring and winter. Um, but the case of Resurrection Island is very unique. And so also now that there is no more military base, uh, and the place still uh, kept the perfect conditions for the Saiga and Isles of Wildlife to exist there, we also know that the area is perfectly suitable to be a shelter for the Saiga, because it's really hard to poach Saigas. Um, and normally, so the decline of the saigas happened because of poaching. So that's the main driver of um, uh, no numbers of the saigas. And the saigas are poached for their horns that are used in traditional Chinese medicine, um, just like rhino horn and any other species. So uh, the case with the Resurrection Island is perfect for the saiga because uh, there people simply cannot use uh, any kind of vehicles to hunt them because the soil is um, not suitable uh, for um, the heavy uh, vehicles to pass by. So that creates this natural protection. And um, that's why we see this area as a perfect opportunity to create a protected area for a wider landscape, including the Saiga, um, in order to ensure uh, that the area uh, remains in this like perfectly preserved uh, and diverse state. Now, the biggest concern is that there is a lot of development um, starting to happen in the region already. Uh, and there are different types of development. So there are good de developmental types. So for example, um, there are different large scale plants that the government has to reforestate the area. And that's a good idea because uh, it's impossible to bring the water back. It's impossible to bring the sea back, uh, even though for a long time uh, people tried to do it and their efforts were not successful. Uh, and it has led to the waste of resources. So now um, a good idea would be to conserve the ecosystem that is there right now, which is uh, more this uh, kind of semi-desert uh, landscape, which is already a different thing. So you cannot really go back to what it used to be, um, this port um, seaside, uh, but you can still preserve what remains. Um, just investing uh, the resources in a slightly different way. And so you can see uh, how different vegetation is being uh, recultivated in the region. Um, we had um, different plans um, to explore the region. And here, for example, you can see Muinak, uh, which is the capital of um, that western, like northwestern part um, of Uzbekistan, where the ROC is and the Resurrection Island. And so that's now is something that serves um, like a like a reminder of uh, what happened with the RLC. Um, however, it creates uh, a lot of opportunities for different uh, stakeholders in the region. Uh, here we talk about communities, we talk about uh, developmental companies, we talk about um, nature conservation groups and many, many more. And so the question now is how this area is gonna be developed. And bear in mind that right now this area uh, contains the poorest population uh, of people in Uzbekistan, even though in the past it used to be the wealthiest part of Uzbekistan because of the port and all the activities related to fishing industry and such. So at this point, I just want to remind us again that the nature and the people are very much interconnected and we can make um, a certain impact 
that can be a good impact that would not only help the environment, but also ultimately will improve our lives too. And Resurrection Island is one of those places that requires this immediate uh, intervention in order to create something that would be long lasting, sustainable, uh, and give a good example, not only for Uzbekistan, but it can be a universal example of successful conservation efforts applicable to different species, different countries, and different communities. So um, let's um, remember that we are all in this together. And thank you so much for your time listening to our talk. Um, now we'll be very happy to take your questions.